Hey guys, it's Space Sins, and we are back with more Charade Maniacs. Continuing Hygie's route. We're actually in Hygie's route now. We skipped through everything last time, so good for us. So anyway, I forget exactly where we were. Huh. Well, we're in the meadow. All right, everyone's been quarantined and shit like that and whatever. So standard, same old. Beyond the warehouse door, something at the edge of the meadow almost tripped me. I regained my balance to see what was on the ground, and I saw something unexpected. Hygie? <laughs> I tripped. I, something tripped me, and I was like, Hygie? And the, I saw something unexpected. Hygie? Because that was not unexpected to me. Was it to you? I doubt it. Hygie? Why are you sleeping here? Hmm? Hygie was lying on the ground while hiding among the grass. It seemed that I had tripped over Hygie. Oh, sis. You're here. I am, but... Come on, get up. Sure. Why in the world does my volume keep cranking when I turn it the fuck down? Jesus. I helped up Hygie and brushed off the grass. Hygie sent me a message saying that he needed something, so there I was. I didn't think that he'd be sleeping right at the entrance, though. So what is it you want? If you're sleepy, we can talk another time. No, I was just sleeping because I was bored. So, big sis, let's play. Play? Wait, that's what you wanted? Yeah. Let's play. <laughs> I just feel like he gives you that shady look and there's no way he's like, yeah, come on. I mean, again, he's like, yes, let's play. And he gives you the fucking Nobuhiko Okamoto fucking voice. The Yang voice. And you're like, excuse me, sir. Where did that come from? <laughs> uh, I'm actually kind of curious with the voice acting to kind of do a little bit more just to see like in normal scenes and then come back to some of these later ones. When Haiji reveals what a sus motherfucker he is, just to see how he changes his voice. Because there's no fucking way they paid that man to just do cutesy voice the whole fucking time. Okay. You're not Elchrist from Fire Emblem Engage. I can't, like, I can't get over that he does that, too. Just because Elchrist is such a little sad sack. And oh, oh, like, mumbly scared little. But then every once in a while in battle, if you've ever played the game... He'll get, like, serious, and you're like, oh, there's the sexy voice coming out. I hear that, son of a bitch. But, like, I think also the first time you meet him in the game, like, he's actually got bravado on, and he's like, who are you crossing our lines? Like, and he's all, and you're, like, all tough, and then when he realizes who you are, then he gets all mumbly, goofy, falling over, like, awkward mess, and it's kind of fucking adorable. And that's when I fell in love with him. <laughs> he's also my bow bitch. <laughs> I've still never finished playing that game. I started playing it like a year ago, I swear. It's just when you get distracted and then you forget. And you're like, ah, oh, fuck yeah. And then when you go back to play, you're like, what the fuck was I? I did play it a little more like a couple months ago. And I got at least to the point where I could give him my ring. They say it's a platonic route, but fuck that shit. We're dating now. That's all. I, you can't convince me otherwise. Oh. No. No. <laughs> I keep thinking of the game like I forgot about it for the longest time. I'm like, oh yeah, it's a game I haven't finished. I haven't finished Persona 5 Strikers either. <sighs> I think it's because I just bought Sympathy Kiss and I was like looking through all the games in my wish list. I'm like, I don't think I put this in my wish list. I just bought the digital copy and I was going through it. I'm like, all these games I was going to buy when I finished all the other ones that I never finished. Yeah, okay. I think that's what it triggered it for me. Anyway, I'm like, let's pull it. Sis. <laughs> he declared that and then took my hand as we headed deeper into the meadow. <laughs> Is that it? Yep, that's it. What about Daza or Gyobu? I'm with them every day and they said they were bored of it. Yeah, what about Daza? Don't talk about Daza in front of me! Haiji's gonna do everything he can so we don't remember poor Daza and it hurts! Stop breaking his name up! <laughs> so that's why. So what do you want to play? If he says doctor, I'm leaving. We can play with plans. There's a good book about that in the library. We crouched down in a good spot, and Haiji repeated what he memorized from the book. Shepherd's purse is also called pen pen grass. Fruit is a heart shape, and you point your fingers downward as you pull. There was a plant that looked like a shepherd's purse growing by Haiji's feet. 
He took that in hand and continued, And if you ring it by your ear, a sound will play when the fruits hit each other. He jingled them by his ear as if to check if there was a sound. The sound was small, but that made it seem, like, uh, seem all the cuter to me. Seeing IG try so hard to make it ring was cute, too. <laughs> Thanks. I definitely heard that. This plant is so mysterious. It's like it's shaped this way specifically so the wind will create that sound. I wonder why it's shaped this way. Big sis, do you know plants are weird? Universe? Magic? Who knows? I don't know either. I wonder why, but I like how cute it is. You know, like the heart shape. I mean, there's flowers that look like birds, and you're like, look at that plant, it looks like a goddamn bird. This is cute? Yeah, it's cute, I think. Really? See, like, side profile, if he stayed side profile, I wouldn't hate him so much. Because he wouldn't creep me out as much. Like, his side profile is actually pretty. Like, okay. But again, no fucking way you're actually 12, okay? Because you are drawn just like every fucking buddy else. After looking at it with interest, Haiji put the shepherd's purse in his pocket and started looking for the next plant. He switches his mindset so quickly. Hey, listen. That's a problem a lot of us have, okay? I saw the shepherd's purse sticking out of his pocket as I chased after him, only to find him playing with some fallen leaves next. I can never do this right. He bent one of the leaves to put a crease in it, but the moment he folded it, the leaf tore in half. What are you doing? I want to make a leaf ship. I can never do it right. Um, for that, you can make that with bamboo leaves. You find leaves with vertical fibers, like this. I remembered making it with my family as I went to look for the right kind of leaf. I then completed the leaf ship. Here, they should do it. Ow. Big bro Dazai kept tearing the leaf all the time while Gyobu didn't even bother to try making it. I can already imagine it. There aren't many places brimming with nature, so maybe some people haven't made grass ships before. He keeps mentioning Dazai and I wish he wouldn't because it hurts me every time it's like a little stab to my heart. I thought about telling him that more people might have done it in the past, but Haiji stared at me, mumbling. Oh, please. Then he looked away and made a grass ship himself. It was much better made than the previous one. Done. Yeah, you did well. As I had an example. He nodded with satisfaction and tried to stick the grass ship in his pocket. Hi, dear, aren't you going to float the grass ship? Float it? There's a river over there. I thought you'd let it float in the river. Are you supposed to? That's what you do with boats, you dumbass. Yeah, it's called a grass ship, so you play with it by floating into the river. Like this. I showed him an example by letting my grass ship loose into the river. He nodded as if he was convinced, but, and put his grass ship into the onto the river. So here's the thing. Like, you're like, oh, that's why he's sweet and innocent. He has no idea a boat goes in the water. Okay, but, like, that also is, like, really sus as fuck, because a 12-year-old would fucking, if you were, like, making, like, leaf boats, they would logically make that connection, because they're not, they're children, they're not stupid. Okay? I mean, kids are dumb, but they're not that fucking dumb. You know what I mean? This is like some kind of alien level shit. We're like, you know what I mean? Like if someone, if you've never made, you'd be somebody, oh, you make a leaf boat. So you fold it, you make a little boat like this. And then you're like, and then do you like put it in water or something? They're like, no, nah, you just put it in your pocket. You'd be like, that's weird. Because your first thought is like, oh, you're going to make it and float it in the river or something. Like, even if you've never made them, you can make that logical conclusion. So the fact that he can't is like... Leading more toward, like, he's either pretending or he forgot how to human. I don't think it it's indicating, oh, he's just an innocent child. No, no, he's definitely not a kid. But he's like an alien or he forgot how to be a person because he's been digital data for so long. But, like, it's sus either way. Is good enough? Yeah, it'll sink right away, but I always competed with my younger sister to see whose grass ship would travel furthest. Both ships sank as I spoke. However, I'd expected as much since they were made on the fly. Oh. Heidi didn't say much else as he watched, giving me this inexplicable feeling. He's still in elementary school, so it isn't strange for him to be ignorant of things. I think it's strange for him to be ignorant of shit like this, though. And I remember what Kyobu had said. And Heidi was strangely ignorant. Yeah, exactly. More so than a normal child. 
There were times that I, that even I could sense that, but because no one had argued against it, it led to Haiji being quarantined like this. When it comes to making grass ships, I only knew about it because I went out with my family so often. Again, like, but again, like, I never, I don't think I ever made grass ships, but I knew exactly what you were supposed to do with them. So, like, even if you've never made one, someone's like, oh, like, make a grass ship. You're like, a what now? Like, oh, yeah, you find a leaf with vertical and you fold it up, you make a boat, and you're like, oh, and then you, like, put it in the water? Like, does it really float? And be like, ah, oh, not for long, but, like, but you would, you'd make that connection. The fact that he doesn't make that connection is the weird fucking part, you know? It's not strange for someone to not know how. It's not strange for someone to not know how to make one. But it is strange for them not to know that a boat goes in the water. Haiji, did you not go out with your family that often? To where? Anywhere like here. Like any meadows, or the mountains, the beach. Places with nature. Oh, they saw lights of videos. Videos? What kind of videos? This makes me feel more like he's an Arcadian than anything. Videos that introduce lots of places. Mountains, oceans, meadows. And overseas. And less like, okay... Remember we saw with Dazai, you could see the robo dog, the palt dog inside the thing. And we knew, okay, we're in the moon base and like potentially whatever happened, the explosion, the crash, the, whatever fucking destroyed it. I can't remember. Could have turned, oh, the Arcadians could have been people that lived here. And like, obviously some of them would have been children. Like, IG could have been living here. Maybe the astronaut that we saw in the video that may give us a weird, like headache or whatever. Maybe it wasn't Haiji, maybe it was Haiji's dad. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go, and we're gonna there, and you live with your family. Because, hello, like Star Trek. Hi, you're living on the Enterprise with your family, going to school there, and then, like, Haiji could have been living here his whole life and not known anything, and then the crap, the explode, whatever happened, destroyed the place. He turns into digital data, just doesn't know how to human, and is like, not actually 12, but kind of, like, stopped being a human, died at that point or whatever, and, like, I've been here for 30 years, so technically I'm 40-some-odd years old, but, like, that's why, like, he's ignorant of certain things that normal people would know, but he also knows a lot more than an average child. He's got this weird knowledge base, like, you don't know certain kanji that you should have learned because you never got to learn them. You don't know certain things that children on Earth would learn because you were never there on Earth doing normal kid things. And you'd have to think, if you had a space base and you live on Earth, a child born on a space base doing things in space would be total have a totally different childhood and different, like, normal kid things than, like, Earth kids would have. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like different countries have different things. Like, Normal kids in country A are going to be different than normal kids in country B. You know what I mean? So, wouldn't be far-fetched to think that, like, he doesn't understand certain things because he didn't have a normal Earth life. He always was here, and he's actually not real. Like, we're not real. We're all digital. He doesn't have a body back on Earth. You know what I mean? Because you know he doesn't. Because when we went back with Daz, I were like, all nine of us. And it's like, you mean ten of us? Right there, Haiji didn't go back, because Haiji doesn't have a body. Haiji doesn't exist. I mean, he probably died here. You know what I mean? So, that'd be kind of interesting. I'll give you that. That's interesting. And he's, like, the mastermind of all of this, because he's trying to connect with people again, because, like, something, you know something, like, I was a person once. Again, either full-on aliens, or the Arcadians are... Used to be people and don't remember how to be people. Because they got scrambled. So something like that. But anyway. I see. But there are things you can't learn just by watching videos. I was thinking it, but I couldn't say it. I knew at the very least that Haiji had grown up under very di different circumstances from mine. Yeah. On a moon base. Or he's a full-on alien. Or both. If we go back to our world. He is in his world. Let's go out together. It could be to the mountains, the beach, or meadows. We could go to lots of places. It'll be fun. And be here? Well, I'm not saying no, but even though this looks like the real thing, it's really a fake made with projected images. Sis, I like the real thing more. Do I like it more? Yeah, I think so. What about you, Haiji? 
don't care either way. Neither means much anyway. Neither. It sounds fun being with you, big sis. So I'd go anywhere with you. Yeah. I was taken aback by the smile that accompanied his words. Although I was treating him like my younger brother, he looked like he was my age. Yeah, because he probably is. The way he was so calm makes him look much older than me. He probably is, technically. That's why I let this slip. Aiji, you're not the producer, are you? I gasped at what I said. What was I saying? He's like, not this time, but technically. No. Sorry, it just came out. I mean, it's not technically a lie, because Dazai is the producer this round, so Dazai is the one you have to name. But... Doesn't mean Haiji's not the mastermind behind it all, so... It's okay. But why did you ask all of a sudden? After your group left the lodging, the producer is all anyone can talk about. They're getting hostile, and we all want to find the producer as soon as possible. Oh, really? Sis, so you're also looking for the producer... I hate the fact that, like, listen, I know Hygie's route is going to give us all, well, most of the answers or whatever, but I just really hate after finding out the whole Dazai secret that we were in love with him and we forgot him and now you feel awful and then we have to do this afterward. And it's like, but stop it. Listen, listen, no, no. I really hope, like, the real ending or whatever after the, the Haiji stuff is, like, the, okay, no, we all go back and then we're back with Dazai again and, like, we full circle so that I don't have to leave with this bad taste in my mouth. Like, I'm not saying Haiji's not going to turn around and be like, okay, now he's actually acting like the fucking real not child he is. Okay, fine. But it's the, well, like, Dazai's over there just, like, waiting for us to remember him and that just hurts, okay? Like, that hurts, man. Fuck. Like, part of me wants to feel a little guilty when you have the childhood friend route. Like, that's always, like, pining for you and then is over there sad because you don't love them and you love someone else. And you're like, I feel a little bad for them, but, like, I'm just usually not into the childhood friend character. And Tomosa sometimes in this one makes you want to punch him in the face. So, like, and sometimes he's not around, so I don't feel guilty. But when he is around and he's being nice, you're like, I do feel a little bad, but, like, not that much because I don't love you to death. You're fine, I guess. But there are some childhood friend characters like, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this guy. And I just feel really bad that he's pining over there for me while I'm loving someone else. I feel, that makes me feel a little bit bad when they're a decent character. But like, Dazai is like awesome. Dazai is like one of my favorites. And like, now I just feel guilty doing a route after that. Like, you can't. No, it hurts. I don't like it. I don't like it. Especially because Haiji keeps bringing him up and making me sadder. And we're going to find the producer. And it's like, I know what's going to happen. We're going to leave poor Dazai behind again. No, we're going to take this whole motherfucking thing down. Anyway. Yeah, but if you ask me if I'm serious about it. You're still hesitant? Yeah. Then let's play together. It'll be more fun that way. Come on. I don't mind playing with you, Haiji. Being for the producer more fun. It's not fun at all, but we need to get back to our world. We have to go back. He's not do we, do you. See, he belongs here. We know this. I want to. Yes, you do. I thought you changed your mind. Heiji, don't you want to go back? It's fun being with you, big sis. So I'm okay with how things are. I like how he's avoiding the fucking answers. But we can meet up even when we go back there, just like I said. Oh. And I don't care either way. He doesn't care either way. He repeated the same words as his eyes looked straight at me. It wasn't a haphazard answer. He was truly thinking that way. There was an entirely different problem. If he was truly thinking that way, there was an entirely different problem. Heiji, do you... Is our world a place you don't want to go back to? I don't really know. That world is boring. I didn't know how to respond and remained quiet. How was it boring? What was boring about it? There were so many things I wanted to ask, but I didn't know how. See, and like, that's not sus? Everything that comes out of his mouth. At the same time, I felt convinced. He feels that the original world is boring, and he's lost interest in it. 
It makes sense that he isn't interested in the conversation and why he doesn't want to go back or doesn't long to see his family. But is that really possible? The feeling was so alien to me, I couldn't understand. If like the Ar if he's an Arcadian and the Arcadians are aliens, it's going to be funny because they keep saying alien, alien, alien. She said it multiple times and like, don't be like, I'm like, remember all those times she said alien? That was, well, you know what I mean? Like, it occurs to me every time she says it, like, if the Arcadians are aliens, that's pretty funny that the game's like, it's really <clears throat> alien to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Noticing my reaction, Hygie studied my face. It's a normal turn of phrase, but it's still funny in context if he's like actually an alien. Never mind that big sis. Let's play. Thinking about hard stuff is boring. Is the stuff I'm thinking about hard? Why aren't you worried about it because it's hard? Always look worried. I'd rather see you smile happily. I like seeing you that way more. So let's play. I don't want to worry either, but... I grasped his outstretched hand and Haiji helped me up with a slight smile. We headed to the building where Haiji's group resided. All the while, I had this smoldering feeling inside. Smoldering for Iochi, Abana, and Dazai. Oh! I knew it. I was like, please, we're, we're like, we're gonna go back to the residence. Please don't show me Dazai. Like, don't get me wrong. I miss Iochi and Ibana. You know, it's like, oh, I miss them. I love them when I see them. But I get like, you know, you got other love interests, man. But like, Dazai hits different. Because you didn't just fall in love with him here. You were in love with him before. He is here hoping you remember him and you forget him every fucking time. Which is totally fine up into his route because you don't know. You know? Until Gyobu's route and then you're like, did were we in love with Dazai in the prior? And is that what's happening? Is that what's going to happen in his route? And then, yes, that's what happened. But you can't really feel that guilty about it in Gyobu's route because you're like, mm, maybe, maybe that's not the case. Right? You feel a slight bit guilty because you're like, if that is, then I feel guilty about it. But it might not be. So, like, whatever. Then you do Dazai's route. And now you got to do another one looking at Dazai and going, I know she, I remember you, though. Rattling in the cage in the back of her brain. Like, please remember Dazai so we don't have to do this. You know? I don't want to. Anyway. Welcome back. Why are you still playing around in the metal? You got leaves on you. I know Abon is technically my favorite. Yochi and Dazai are like right behind him. So very fucking close. But like, I can't help but feel for Dazai more than anybody else though. Because like, fuck. Fuck. Damn it. I let go of Haiji's hand and saw leaves stuck to him everywhere. You're right. I giggled a bit while plucking them off, and Haiji, while squinting, touched my hair. This is you too, and then he gave me looks. Thanks. Although it felt a bit awkward, Haiji then walked over to the table they always used. Um, so, what did you want to play with next? Finding the producer. And like, now knowing, and then does I looks like, huh? Everyone besides Haiji froze up. I wondered about what he I wondered about what he was saying and then realized he was trying back he was trying back to what we had talked about. What? He was tying back. Oh my god, okay, that was me reading. He was tying back to what we had talked about. He says you said that earlier, so I just wanted to mention it. I guess we should play something more fun. Like he brought that up the shady. Oh, I didn't think you could joke like that. Finding the producer would be nice. How about the three of us try? Stop it. That probably wasn't what Sina had in mind. Yeah. As I look in Dazai's sad little eyes, I'll never give you up. She might, because she's a bitch, but I won't. We'll all die here together. I won't. Oh, but we won already, because I remember you. I'm the little voice in the back of her head screaming, Please don't forget Dazai! Don't do it! It kills me. But if you ask me whether that really was my intention, Haiji's not wrong. Then how about we play charades? Denied. That was way too fast. You're gonna use some weird gestures. I'm tired of dealing with it. 
Can we just get something to drink and have a chat? That fun? It is for me. Then let's do that. What? Well, then play your games by yourself. We're all just having a conversation and Cube was over there playing charades. <laughs> You're terrible, man. Don't exclude me. Then what do you want to talk about? Oh, May, I want a soda. On you, Sena. Well, we only have tea and soda here. Oh, tea, please. I'll have tea, too. Why am I the one getting it? Don't leave me. Sounds like complained, but he still prepared everything. He was truly kind in that way. <laughs> Soft little cotton candy bunny rabbit. He poured the drinks into cups with familiar patterns and passed them out to everyone. Hey, this is the same cup you used at the lodging. Hey, yeah, when I came here, I asked the bouncer to get me the same thing. I kind of got used to using it. Hey, I think this soda's flat. Is it just my imagination? It is your imagination. But the amount of bubbles between yours and mine are totally different. You made mine flat. I just did what you did to me. Hey, you were mad after all. You said you didn't care at the time. These two always like this. Yeah. They're such good friends. Think so? Look like they're fighting to me. We sure are. We sure aren't. I think that's what makes them look like good friends. They start start a little fight again, so we started our own conversation. Hi, do where do you usually sleep? Over on that sofa. Sofa? Don't you feel stiff? How about we get the watcher to give you a bed? I don't really mind. Lady can sleep anywhere, so it's fine. I see him sleep on the floor sometimes. Oh, I guess you're right. I nodded and remembered him lying in the grass earlier. Nazai and Gyobu rejoined the conversation. But May, you're the same too. The three of us here don't really care about that. I think that's why we're able to live here. I guess you're the same too, Gyobu. Bro, Gyobu seems to eat whatever he wants too. If you ask me, Haiji, you eat whatever you want. What do you mean by that? I saw him eating trash the other day. I'm just kidding. He sometimes eats ice cream for dinner, and I'll use chocolate ice cream as salad dressing. He puts berry favorite flavored gelato and cold noodles too. Okay, that if you're if he's not a fucking alien, what the shit? I mean, eating ice cream for dinner sometimes as an adult, you're like, fuck, I'm gonna eat ice cream for dinner because I can. Because I'm an adulty adult. But, like, ice cream is a salad dress. I'm gonna vomit. Listen. Listen. I don't hate salads or lettuce, okay? But you do not... You don't fuck up a salad by putting chocolate ice cream on it. And you don't fuck up ice cream by putting a salad in it. Okay? You just don't cross the streams. Gross. Wait, what? Tastes interesting. You don't say that it tastes delicious, huh? Not good sometimes, though. IG, what did you eat until now? Didn't your parents ever say anything? I don't really know. See, because he can't remember life before he was a whatever. What do you mean? Again, because he's an alien and never had parents, or... All the Arcadians are people things and they just don't remember anything from before the explosion. And You know what I mean? Whatever it was. Wow, I'd like to see Haiji's family. They'd probably be out of this world. See, they keep saying alien and out of this world. So, like, I'm just saying, you know, that that's like, if they're not aliens, they're using an awful lot of alien terminology. You're the one that's been the weirdest the past few days. So I don't want to hear that from you. I get it. I want to see what Haiji's family is like. Haiji, you said you had an older sister, right? Yeah. Big sister also liked ice cream. I see. Maybe you think of her when eating it. I guess I can't really blame you for that. You sure about that? I think it's okay to ban him from putting ice cream in noodles. I tend to make food that my family likes, too. It reminds me of my family when I cook, so... And it makes you lonely. How cute. 
It's just nostalgic, but sometimes it makes me sad. Even among the cast, you're especially fixated on that. Well, it's pretty normal. Once we're back, what are you going to do, big sis? Conversation stopped with that question. I didn't understand what he meant by it. What do you mean by that? Thought you'd want to go back so much because there was something you wanted to do. I want to stay here till I remember Dazai. It's more like, I just want to go back to my old way of life, but also, I miss my family. I miss Dazai. What do you miss most about your family? My younger siblings would be especially worried, so I want to relieve them of that. My mom used to be feeling strained because I suddenly vanished. My mom must be, sorry. My sisters sure are a handful. Uh-huh. Well, that's a typical older sister response. I can't imagine my siblings worrying. Huh? How's that? Your brother and sister are older than you than you are, right? I think they'd be worried. Worried about themselves, maybe, since they can't force their responsibilities on me. But you still miss them, right? Well, what a half-hearted response. You want to see them like that? Or is that how it is for all siblings? Dazai's over here. I miss you more. As he's pining away. We forget him. Ugh. Break my heart. What about you, Haiji? Don't you want to see your older sister? Do. He tilted his head to the side and looked like he was thinking about something. It was rare for him to hesitate like that. I don't know. Never thought about it. You're always extremely indifferent about it. I sometimes think you're an AI or something. Basically, because he ain't real. Again, he's either an alien or he's like... Again, are Arcadians aliens or are they just like bits of people that haven't quite figured out there were people once before? So, I'm just saying. That's rude of you. Even AI from 100 years ago have more personality than that. Dazai! Oh, the burn! Someone call the ambulance, Jesus. Like, that's rude! Even AI a hundred years ago aren't this fucking stiff. Jesus! Oh my god! You would think he's defending hygiene, he's defending fucking AI from a hundred years ago. That's amazing. Who's the rude one here? You didn't like your sister very much? It's not that. He seemed to hesitate and didn't say anything more. It made me think. Did he think the original world is boring because he doesn't get along with his sister or the rest of his family? Then that would make sense. But, as if to interrupt my thoughts, hey, Haiji glanced at my face. But I have you now, big sis Sina. That's why it's fun here. So you don't mind because you have a replacement? You don't really say things in the worst ways. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. It helps to think of me as your older sister. I'm honored, Haiji. It's better than feeling lonely the entire time. You aren't a replacement, big sis. For yourself. Oh, thanks. While we were talking, Dazai and Gyobu started to argue with each other about what they did in the past. The two really are close. While I was thinking, Gyobu's elbow hit a cup. It fell to the floor, shattering it. Whoops. What are you doing? Sorry about that, but the bouncer will get me a new one right away. Are you okay? You're not hurt, are you? It fell right next to Haiji, so I looked for glass pieces while asking. I'm okay. I didn't know it shattered that easily. Well, it's made of glass. Um, maybe we can get Watcher to give us some cleaning tools to pick up the pieces. Or we could just ask Watcher to clean it up for us. Like, listen. I gathered the pieces carefully with the broom, put them in a paper bag, and wiped down the... and wiped down with a wet cloth. Okay, like, I'm just saying that's a lot, but, like, if I have a magic robot that, like, can be like, hey, Watcher, yeah, can you dust for me? Yeah, sure, Vzzit, dust gone. I'm not going to be like, hey, give me a dust cloth and some stuff, and I'm not, because dusting isn't fun. But she's a fucking weirdo. I guess she thinks this is fun. I was used to doing that because of my siblings, so I quickly cleaned it up and tied up, and tied up the bag. I mean, I get it if you don't have, like, the money to have a magic cleaning robot, but if I had a magic cleaning robot, like a Watcher in this world, I would be using that shit. Um, where's the trash can? Look around you. Are you throwing that away? Huh? Yeah, it's broken. Oh, I guess so. I'd fix it if I could, but it's a glass cup. Be fixed? Um, I'm not that good with handiwork. I can do a little with sewing, though. For example, 
I can fix stuff like torn buttons or frayed stitching on stuffed animals. So let me know if you need that. Sure, I got it. So can I have that? Aiji said that and then reached for the bag with the pieces. Huh? This? But it's dangerous. It's okay. I'm just gonna put it in the grave. Aiji took the bag quietly and walked off. I was stunned as I watched him leave. Nazai, who was cleaning the rest of the glass, called out to me. What's wrong? No, it's nothing. I think... Huh? Where's Gyobu? The grave. Oh my god, is... Haiji the fish? And we... <laughs> he said he was bored of talking, so he left. I dumped all the cleanup on me. He really just does whatever he wants. Although I was mumbling that, I couldn't help but think about other things. Grave? For what? For the glass cup? Later, I thought that maybe I should have gone with him to see what he meant. Yeah, but... Aiji was a bit unique, but then you're gonna... Oh. He was 12 years old, the youngest among the cast, and he was an animal handler at a school. The animal handler, like... Is he someone else we forgot? Because didn't we say, like, oh, the person who used to take care of the goldfish or somebody left and that's how we ended up with the goldfish or something and then it died and then we buried it? And now it just feels very, like, the grave and he's the animal handler or whatever. You know what I mean? It seems to be tying into that somehow. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just trying to make connections where there aren't, but. He was quiet and rarely joined discussions because he'd say it was too hard. He struggled with reading kanji and lacked knowledge. That's why he wasn't great with the dramas, and I got worried whenever I'd see him in one. Again, I think it's more because he's an alien, not that he's 12. But he loved ice cream, and he was more knowledgeable about the flavors than anyone. That's what it seemed like. That's what I know about him. That and he has an elder sister. That and... I didn't want to say it. He lacks emotion. He didn't laugh loudly like kids would. He didn't get angry or cry either. Like a robot. I'd never seen him express emotion like that. That's why Gyobu suspects him. That was probably one of the reasons he was a suspect. He didn't act his age. Exactly, because he's not. He says Sina? He called my name and I looked up. We were called to be cast members in a stream and I was about to read the script. And I was preoccupied with something else. I was wondering why we were at the school suddenly. Okay. Sorry, I was thinking of something. What's up? This drama is about bullying, right? But they still hug and declare their love? Oh, yeah, well, it's a drama, so stuff like that can happen. Uh-huh, convenient that um, I'm going to bully him, but like, no, no, I love you. Oh, that's funny. That sounds like something somebody involved with the stream would write. Perv. The drama I was doing with Haiji was the same one with the bullying theme that we'd done for a while. I was the bully. Haiji was being bullied. But... Otari, who was being bullied, has always had feelings for Agawa. That's unexpected. Yeah! That seems a little sus, doesn't it? I've seen this kind of drama before. Well, I haven't seen you take part in any romance stuff before. Kind of making me nervous, but let's do this. Ew. Sure. I think I would get a punishment game, because I don't think I'd be able to even act like I was... It just into a 12-year-old. Like, gross. Gross. Igawa stopped bullying Watari while Kitakura continued. After being released from the hospital, Watari noticed that and tried to protect Igawa. Seeing that, Igawa... Watari, played by Haiji, had been pushed out the window by Igawa, played by me, and suffered broken bones. His injury finally recovered and he returned to school. He saw Kitakura, the mastermind behind the bullying, and Igawa have a standoff. I... Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna throw this out there because, like... Oh, okay... Oh, I shoved him out the... Listen, I know there was... Oh, the little boy pulls your hair because he likes you. Um, don't pull girls' hair. Don't fucking do that. But so what we're, we're trying to say is that I shoved him out a window because I was into him. And, like, it's going to turn into a love story because if someone shoves you out a fucking window and breaks your bones, you're going to be like, yeah, no, I get it. You were always in love with me. That's cool. And you're going to... No! The fuck? This is everything wrong. Like, it, 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 no game. No. 
So like, but you're trying to tell me that they would have thrown that in the drama. Like that would have been believable at all. But Hygie has nothing to do with the stream at all. Bullshit. Yeah. Like I know Dazai created the stream that we went to with the school and whatever. And he put that special one together. But I don't think he's the only one in control of the scripts and stuff because, you know, I can't imagine him putting us in romance dramas. I don't think, yeah, that he can't say anything because then he'd be like, oh, yeah, no, Hygie's the mastermind behind everything. They're like, how do you know? Well, actually, I'm the producer and, you know, he wants you to remember him. So, of course, he's not going to say anything. Anyway, Watari decided to intervene to save Agawa. That was the synopsis up until the previous episode. Okay, cut your hand earlier. Just go away. Why did you follow me? Good, I could take my anger out. You're hurt. Let's go to the infirmary. I said I'm fine. You're the one that's hurt. Huh? We read the lines as shown in the script, and Hygie stood up and froze. I pretended to cry while hunching over from where I was. I was the one who pushed you! Agawa had pushed Watari out the window and regretted injuring him. I mean, okay, good for her. I hurt you then, so there's no need for you to be worried about me being hurt. I regret it, don't you? Shut up! This isn't regret! I'm just afraid. There's no end in sight when you hurt others. I thought I almost killed you by going too far, so I realized that I couldn't keep doing it. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of myself. I'm also afraid of Kirakura. I'm truly afraid of him. He's the most dangerous because he's fearless. I can't understand him, so I distanced myself. I mean, this does kind of fit into the part of the drama we did with, you know, Gyobu. We're like, I don't want to do this anymore type of a thing, but... Never thought I'd be targeted. I can't take it anymore. What is this anyway? That called regret. I don't know, but I refuse to apologize to you. It's too late for that anyway. I forgive you. He quickly no his quick nonchalant response made me hesitate. The script said there was supposed to be a long silence. Huh? I forgive you. You're afraid that I might not forgive you. you Look down on me in the past. You eventually distanced yourself from me. Now you're afraid. I forgive you. As long as you're sorry, I'm fine with it. You seem to have cut ties with Kitakura, too. That's to apologize. If you apologize to me now, I'll forgive you. Sounds shady and creepy. Now it was my turn to be silent. I pretended to sob while saying the line, I'm sorry. I'm afraid of you the most. <laughs> I could totally fucking win an Oscar for that. <laughs> You've been different since entering high school. I couldn't find anything to make fun of about you. I was afraid you'd attack me back. Sorry. Please forgive me. I was just afraid of you all along. I never hated you. I cried, or pretended to cry while confessing. Haiji came over and hugged me. I knew that. Being feared hurts more than being pushed out a window. Don't ever say that again. I always loved you. I tried to change myself because you looked down on me. I wanted to change so I could declare these feelings to you. I mean, I think it's kind of, I think the beard hurts more than being pushed out a window. Like, I feel like that's gonna kind of tie into whatever he's hiding is like, I don't want you to be afraid of me type of a thing. But then there, this is disturbing. I've always loved you. Because, you know, sometimes these parallel what's going on. You know what I mean? There's Or there's sometimes... A little something something in the later ones, the scenes that we do that kind of align or something that ties into what's happening in the route. So I just don't want, because this would be interesting. I couldn't bring myself to say it ever since you started to fear me. Aiji spoke in a monotone voice as he released me from this hug. That you love me? It's strange to say that now. Whatever. I just love you purposely aimed to attend this higher ranked school that you went to. Changed the way I talked and walked all for that. Didn't... Oh, don't say that you're afraid of me. I've always loved you. 
I'm really kind of curious if this ties into his route somehow. Like, how? I was surprised by Agaba's confession. I barely managed to muster up the words. But never seemed that way. I was thinking of telling you once I became confident in myself. You started to bully me. I hug you again. But not because I love you. I want us to make up. Stupid. Sure, you want to bury the hatchet? I want to bury it right in you. I'm just kidding. I don't hate him that much, but I just. When he gives me this face, it creeps me out. Do the side profile, then I can handle it. Yeah. I want to make up with you and go back to how we were. I'll give you a serious confession the next time. So don't run away from me. Don't say you're afraid of me. I don't care what you say or do to me. Love for you won't change no matter what happens from here. Okay, so I'm going to remember Dazai and we're going to go off together. Bye. Matari continued to embrace Agawa as the drama came to an end. Right before it ended, Haiji whispered in my ear, Oh, I'll send you a message later. Huh? Whispered so softly that only I could hear it. I looked at Haiji's face with surprise, but he only smiled in response. The tone of his whispered voice and the strength of his arms pulling me close caused my heart to jump a little. Yeah, because he's probably like, I'll send you a message later. And you're like, excuse me, sir? Where did that come from? It feels strange how I can't sense any of his emotions from that. While I was thinking that, I heard the sound that signaled the end of the stream. After the drama ended, I returned to my own room. I just finished lunch and was resting in my room when the Otherworld stream started. I thought about taking another break and sat on my bed when I got a message on my bangle. I wonder if it's Haiji. I want to be with you during system maintenance tomorrow. I'm here tomorrow morning. System maintenance. We did get a notification the other day. We were ordered to remain in our rooms during the system maintenance. Would it cause problems if I just went out? Even if I don't stay in my room... But why would he ask me to do this? Maybe I was just worried. Ever since those three were quarantined, there hadn't been a system maintenance. I thought of that while I responded to Haiji's message affirmatively. He didn't respond to that, but I was sure he read it. With that drama from earlier, Haiji was able to say the lines smoother than usual, and he was actually acting. Was he acting, though? I wonder why. It didn't touch my heart at all. Eh. After the act, that whisper made my heart jump so much more. It was a bit of a strange feeling. Having to do romance dramas each time is nerve-wracking, and it makes me strangely nervous. It was different this time. Creepy little pervert. Her! Getting her heart all jumping over a twelfth- Gross! The following day, before system maintenance started, I brought a lunchbox with me as I walked through the warehouse gate. Futami was the one on lookout, so he didn't say anything in particular to me. Maintenance was starting soon, so Futami returned to the lodging. Welcome, big sis. Beyond the gate, Haiji was waiting for me. Good morning, Haiji. You were waiting for me. It's bored. So what did you bring? A lunchbox. The watchers won't give us any food during maintenance, so let's eat it together. Sure. Let me hold it for you. It's okay. It's light. Haiji just squinted and held both his hands out in front of me. I saw it in a drama said it's uncool to let a girl carry her things. <laughs> I don't think that's always true. Well, I guess I can ask you this time. I handed over the lunchbox to him, and he held out, held onto it carefully. He seemed to enjoy doing that, and that made me smile. Something good happened? Yeah. What happened? He came here, big sis. <laughs> oh, really? Seeing him happy over such simple things made me happy, too. This girl is so bamboozled by this shady motherfucker. We walked side by side and talked about trivial things. We soon saw the building where they lived. But right before that, Haiji pulled my hand. I want to be alone together just a little longer. Creepy. Huh? Four of us can eat lunch together. And I want to keep you to myself for now, big sis. Haiji wasn't the kind to express his emotions in a showy way. But sometimes he'd behave like a small child. Speaking of which, my younger sisters would often fight over my attention. I nodded in response to his adorable request as I looked around me. And where should we go before maintenance? Two of them are in the building. 
This way. For me. After saying that, we walked deeper into the meadow. Things looked pretty much the same. I didn't know how far we were from the building, but we sat down together in an open space. Let's talk here. We can see the sky or even nap here. Okay, the maintenance will take a while. We found a place to sit and resumed talking. Kaiji didn't talk much in the presence of others. In that moment, I could tell that it was only because he wasn't able to keep up. I thought maybe we could make up for it if we had some alone time to talk. That's why I felt our time together was precious. Kaiji... Oh, countdown. Right when I was about to bring up the topic again, Watcher started the countdown. System maintenance commencing in ten. Nine. You're right. Hey, Watcher, come to my lap. You'll fall to the ground. Responding to my voice, Watcher landed on my lap as he continued the countdown. Two. One. Countdown ended and the system maintenance began. The area around us turned dark, but the meadow looked the same. Huh. Meadow didn't change. That way. I realized that I'd never seen how this sector looked during a maintenance period. I felt relieved when I saw that my surroundings hadn't changed much. Thank goodness. It wouldn't feel great if we were all of a sudden surrounded by walls like over there. Like the meadow moor? Yeah, it would have been nicer if I got to see the see a bright sky, too. IG repositioned himself as he leaned on me. I wondered if he was worried, but seeing how completely calm he was, I realized that I was the one who felt worried. Sis, you're always so kind to the Watcher. It's, cu it's cute, so I end up talking to it. Although I know it's watching our every move. I heard it used to be a regular work robot. That's why it's not necessarily watching us. Oh, really? He knows all this shit because... Hi, why? He lived here forever? Yeah, so keep being kind to it. It'll love it. Oh, okay. It was true it would listen to what I said. It would go off in weird directions at times, but I found that to be cute, too. It seemed to make more sense, considering that it wasn't specialized in surveillance. Considering that, Arcadia seems peaceful. There are no dramas during maintenance, either. Peaceful? Well, there isn't too much to worry about. When there is a drama, you're always worried about whether or not you'll be hit with a punishment game. We also get impatient about saving more points, although I'm used to it now. I'm sorry, that must have sounded weird. Let's talk about more fun stuff. It's okay. I can talk about anything with you. Kaiji stared into the distance, looking deep in thought. We were so close physically, but I still had no idea what he might have been thinking. Kaiji, you don't seem to be afraid of the maintenance. Maintenance? That's scary. I assume that you'd want to be together because you were afraid or worried. Oh, it's even okay if it's for another reason. Do I need a reason to want to be with you? Not exactly, but... Our shoulders touched and I felt his weight against me as he whispered. I never thought that being with someone like this could be so fun. Huh? It's warm sitting like this. I feel a difference in temperature when we sit apart. Alone is boring. Never thought that before, but it's different now. I always want to be with you, big sis. Even if there's no reason for it. It's strange to want that. It's not strange, but... You really never thought that before? Yeah. What about with family? Or friends? Aren't you supposed to be with family? Friends. I have many, so I don't know. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I just... I just didn't notice until now. Yeah, I've just forgotten. In that case... It makes sense why it all feels so nostalgic. The more we talk, the more I learned about Haiji. I was starting to see what kind of person he was. Yeah, like... A super old man and a child... But like... Not... Not a normal... Not... not Maybe not a person, but also definitely not 12. For some reason, I felt sadder the longer I talked with him. But also that, like, maybe I just don't remember. Like, yeah, because I don't remember a lot about being a human, huh? The difference in our experiences and environments was just too great. Well, yeah, because... Hi, he... Er, not Earth person. Space person, maybe, or alien, whatever. That difference got me thinking. Haiji might not think this. This just might be my own assumption. But Haiji is... Just so lonely. Well, probably if he's been living here and then 
he's the mastermind behind bringing people to the stream and like whatever. And I, I feel like he was always the producer, but made Dazai this one just to, because he got caught the last time, you know what I mean? And then it was like, all right, you be the producer. And then you can get, it's cause it's like a new twist to the game. You know what I mean? But he's definitely the mastermind behind everything. Like, there's no way he's not like he's something seriously to do with this. Cause you know, you can't if you can't have a different producer and sponsors every time and not have somebody overseeing the whole thing. Although maybe he's a robot like the director, you know. By the time we ran out of things to talk about, it was probably time for lunch. So Hygie and I went inside the building. Huh. But Taza and Gyobu, who were supposed to be there, were nowhere to be found. Where did those two go? We're here when I went to get you. Maintenance started already. Where could they have... Right when I was about to turn around, I heard a voice behind me. I'm back. Uh, I assumed it was Gyobu. To my surprise, both of them were there. For some reason, they looked strangely meek. Surprise me? Where were you? I should ask you the same. You must be feeling lucky to come here during maintenance. I asked her to come. Can't do anything during the maintenance, so it would be boring. Uh huh. After saying that much, the two of them went separately to the sofa and chair. Now, as I remained quiet, while Gilbu spoke out to both of us in turn, "Have a seat. Well, let's have a little chat." Oh, I made lunch, so I brought it here. How about we talk while we eat? Save that for later. His tone was serious, so I quietly put the lunchbox on top of the table. What happened? Now as I remained quiet, while Gilbu was unusually serious, are they going to talk about the, the thing that they found the last time, you know, the last couple times? I tried to gauge their expressions while Hygie and I sat at the table. I was thinking about where this place is. Where? I was confused by what that meant. Paying me no heed, Gilbu continued. This other world. Arcadia. This place is completely different from the world where we're from. Yeah. When we first came here, we saw the two moons and thought it was the world from 30 years ago. Looking back, that was absurd. But we know that there were projections, and we have no way of knowing where this place is. But... Yobu took a photo out from his pocket. The photo looked familiar. He previously found a photo of the other world during maintenance at the library and showed it to us. Do you remember that? Yeah, that photo showed the same scenery as Arcadia during maintenance, so we assume that's what it truly looked like. That's right. I wondered about that, so I printed the photo out myself and did some research. I calculated the height and width of the walls surrounding Arcadia, and I calculated whether there was any structure in Japan with the same size. However, the library didn't have enough data, and we can't access the network so I never found out. But in exchange, I found out it with information on the Morpheus Project. Yobu took a book out from his belongings. It was a book printed on paper with a small number of pages and limited information. However, there was a big color photo. This? It was odd. Compared it with the photo Gilbu showed us earlier. It looks like the same place. Is this the lunar base for the Morpheus Project? Yes. Only part of it was made public, but Arcadia matches the scenery of the base that was said to be constructed on the dark side of the moon. Huh? Nazai, who had reigned quiet until now, leaned in to take a look himself. He started to compare the two with surprise, like me, but he remained stunned, unable to deny it. I mean, just because he's being the producer this time doesn't mean he knows where we are, you know? Oh, this is impossible. Yeah, this is impossible. After the failure of the Morpheus Project, there was no space travel to the moon. Besides, well, there was an accident at the lunar base that rendered it unusable. Wasn't that what caused the project to fail? Yeah, and like, but if you look at the ruins around you, it's like, obviously something caused it to fail, and maybe all the people there died. Yeah, I think it was because the Morpheus satellite was crushed in an accident, causing the lunar base to break down. Orbital correction device on Morpheus malfunctioned. The explosion also affected the lunar base. Okay, it was an explosion. But see how, like, like I'm sorry. Did you just whip out, like, some shit? The orbital. 
I'm sorry, the orbital correction device. Not like, oh, yeah, that shit crashed. Normal people talk. The orbital correction device malfunctioned and got, like, excuse me? Excuse me, scientists speak over there? Taiji suddenly started explaining it while the three of us looked on with surprise. The fact that you know so much about it. But IG continued on as if it were nothing. I know we're at time, but like, we're going to finish the scene. That's why the base was abandoned and the Morpheus project failed. That's what it said in a book. Yeah, right. The orbital correction device. Morpheus was in an orbit closer to Earth, Earth than the moon. Sometimes it would orbit much further away. He set up an explosive device on it so that it could change its orbit in the event that it might collide with Earth. Oh, I see. And that still means that the lunar base is no longer functional. It's impossible for this place to be the lunar base. Still, all I can say is that there are too many things that match. If we're just, if we just, if we're just considering the issue of appearance, this world could just be virtual reality. They could have just re recreated the data of the lunar base. Well, it's impossible to recreate this much detail. If this is virtual reality, then what's going on? Have we been in virtual reality all this time? Kinda, sorta, because our bodies aren't really here, so technically. Well, it's impossible. My life, life senses feel too realistic. And there are much too many examples to list. Well, what's even stranger are the dramas. Strange? What about them? Well, I've never heard of feeling pain in virtual reality. Yeah, that's what the bangles are for, though. Oh, right. Pain would cause too heavy of a load in those virtual- in virtual- on those in virtual reality. So it was heavily restricted. Of course, feeling serious pain or the sort of pain that might make you feel like you're dying is techno technologically possible, but ethically banned. Ethically banned! But, but the Arcadia... This does not follow ethics. I know that, but having wounds instantly heal or getting warped from place to place happens all the time in games. It all starts to make sense if we assume this is all virtual reality, don't you think? Hello? I agree. Yeah, but I still can't believe there's an environment that can make the development of such a program possible. Then, is this place actual, actually reality, and the facilities here were just built to look like the lunar base? On purpose? Why would they do that? I, I don't know. Hmm. What if NOIRC made the base on Earth the same as the lunar one for testing purposes? If so... But that would mean that this place is an internal facility on the, of the Information Bureau. Yeah, that would be insane. It would mean the Information Bureau has been behind the other world's stream all along. I think that's too much of a leap in logic. It's already a huge leap to think we're on the moon, so that's not something to worry about. We are not exactly on the moon. Our bodies are on Earth, but our bo but we think we're on the moon because we're technically on the moon, but in virtual reality on the moon. So weird. No way. It's impossible. They're abusing the facilities that we used for the Morpheus Project? You don't know if it's impossible. The Information Bureau could have set it all up. No, that's impossible. Aw, oh, I get the feeling that you think too highly of the Morpheus Project and the Information Bureau. That's because the project's goal was to use the Morpheus satellite to consolidate all of the data in the world on the lunar base for space development. That was the purpose of the lunar base. The entire project was one of hope, and our future was on the line. Consolidating data. Yeah, every country talked about managing their own data, and the goal was to manage all of that data on the moon. Consolidating data, which we are. We're just ones and zeros right now. It would try to predict climate change on a global scale and use it for safety management. It was created to reduce all inconveniences. Inconveniences, huh? Like they'd tell us that it would be dangerous from a certain point? Yeah. And places in need of supplies would get them. I... Guess so? And they'd stream drama so they could provide regular entertainment for everyone? Yobu! And that isn't much different from here. Right. This place would be the world in which the Morpheus Project was actually a success. That's not true! That project was supposed to be wonderful! I caught myself off guard. When did I start to think of it that way? Yobu seemed to have read my mind and spoke with a sarcastic tone. You sound like a fanatic of the Morpheus Project. Why are you so insistent on defending it? That project ended in failure either way. Well, this is interesting. Do we forget other things? That's because my mother always talked to me about it. About the project and how great it was. Your mother? 
Was she employed by the Bureau? She wasn't, but... So your mother is the fanatic. Our parents' generation experienced the Morpheus Project firsthand, so there were lots of people like that. We all went quiet after that. It felt so awkward. I don't know why I got so defensive about it. Morpheus Project happened before I was born. Well, anyway, we can't call for help from here either way, so that's meaningless. There's, oh, there's no point in fun in the flames. So let's talk about more constructive stuff. Oh, are you really the one to say that? As I became quiet again, I could sense that something happened between these two, but seeing Gyobu be so cold made me think that it wasn't the best time to ask. What happened between them? We then ate lunch despite the awkward atmosphere. We talked with Haiji as we killed time waiting for the maintenance period to end. Here we go. I mean, we already knew we were on the moon base and whatever, and I've already been saying, like, we're not really here because even Iochi kind of confirmed that. Like, oh, our bodies are back on Earth. Don't worry about it. So, like, you know your digital data. You're not really here, but you are. Um, because I can't imagine that this place has oxygen. Like, it probably would have been safe for people to live on whatever, but then when the satellite crashed or whatever happened, like, this place blew up. It's not, there's probably no oxygen in the environment. It wouldn't be safe. For people to be here so we're here digitally doesn't make a difference and i don't think so the arcadians could again just be the people that maybe died here or i again i thought with iochi iochi's brother was here or whatever it was like arcadi the people that hit their dead ends become arcadians so it's kind of like the arcadians seem less like aliens and more like digital data maybe people that died here or whatever whether from the streams or from the morpheus project crash explosion um and like that's why Hygie's here Hygie never goes back with us so Hygie is like the mastermind behind all of this somebody has to be con controlling all of it because it hasn't been Daza every single time he was only this current producer and we know why so Hygie's the mastermind behind it and he's probably an Arcadian because Arcadians are probably like what were once people and that's why he doesn't remember or learn or know certain things because he's forgotten a lot of shit you know what i mean and he doesn't have a normal human because he was probably raised here you know what i mean and he's been dead for god knows how long he doesn't remember his family because that's information that he doesn't have in his mind anymore because you know whatever happened destroyed daddy yeah i mean i throw out these theories so like somewhere in there you know so anyway but uh, it's going to be interesting, though, to see, like, what his actual involvement is and, like, how it ties in, you know? Like, were you, like, one of the scientists? Were you just a kid that was raised here that died? Like, you know, exactly. But anyway, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.